And welcome back to The Travel Show. We so appreciate your listening. If you want to give us a call with your travel questions, oh my goodness, I don't have that number in front of me. Uh, it's a new number. It's 855-300-0080. But before we get back to the questions, we have Laura Morelli on. She's been on the Travel Show before. She's a favorite guest. She is a Ph.D. She's an, an esteemed author. She has a book coming out this March called The Gondola Maker. And she has several shopping guides to Europe. One is called Made in Italy. Another is called Made in France. Laura, thanks so much for coming back on The Travel Show. Hello, Pauline. It's such a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Well, it's great to talk to you. We have a whole new series of guidebooks out, and our newest guidebook to Italy is what we consider the classic itinerary. It's Rome, Florence, and Venice. You, as a shopping expert, I want to pick your brain. If somebody is going to those destinations, what should they buy? What are the really unique things they should bring home? Well, you know, all of us love to bring home a special souvenir from a trip, especially one to Italy. Uh, But when shopping in an unfamiliar environment, sometimes it's hard to tell the treasure from the trash. And so my mission is really to lead travelers beyond the tourist traps to discover authentic uh, local traditions and hopefully bring home a great treasure in their suitcase. So if you're going to Venice, Florence, and Rome, um, my main tip is to try to buy directly from an artisan, a maker, whenever possible. And in Italy, the good news is this is almost always possible. <laughs> um, in, in Venice, for example, um, you know, avoid the, the shops with, with hundreds of masks hanging and seek out some of the mask makers themselves where you can actually watch them work and bring home a great value in your suitcase. Because part of the problem is in those shops with hundreds of masks, a lot of those masks are going to have been made in China, right? Yes, unfortunately that is true. And so that's why it's always worth it to find somebody who's actually making things on site um, and is uh, in a traditional way. Can you Um, ask that person to make you a custom mask? Could you say, I love red and orange? Uh, Would you make me a mask like that? Absolutely. And, you know, Pauline, Italian artisans are masters of customization. It's really one of the best places in the world to get something customized. So you can absolutely ask them to make you something special. All right. So we have for Venice, you go and you find an actual mask maker and you, you, you get a mask from them. What's the what's the totemic gift, if that's the right word, for Florence? Well, everyone, I think, thinks about leather goods in Florence, and there's no denying that Florence is a, is a capital of leather working. I usually recommend that people opt for more portable goods, such as change purses, wallets, watch bands. Again, these are, are small, portable things that... Um, usually are entirely handmade. And again, you can find artisans who are actually making them on site. You can watch them make them. You can order something customized, and it's very easy to get at home. And I guess you find those artisans by looking in your book, which is called Made in (laughs) Italy, and gives exact information about these really special shops. What about Rome? It's such a big, bustling, overwhelming city. What what it what is it known for in terms of its crafts? Or well, arts? of course, we think about marble uh, being associated with with Rome mainly because of the ancient world. But I direct travelers to the goldsmiths in town. There are some wonderful artisan goldsmiths working in Rome. Some of them use models or take inspiration from antiquity. I bought a ring one time that was actually stamped using an imperial seal from the Roman era. Mm -hmm. And it's very beautiful and really special. So that uh, goldsmithing is absolutely a traditional craft in Rome. We're speaking with Laura Morelli, who has a new historic novel coming out this March called The Gondola Maker. She's also known for her shopping guide. She has one called Made in Italy and another called Made in France. Let's get to France. Let's go off the beaten path now. Say you've been to Paris before, you've been to the Riviera. If you're a really avid shopper, what part of France do you want to go to? 
Well, some of my favorite spots in France are in the central and southern regions. These are very much off the beaten path and a great opportunity for immersion into the history of French artisanal traditions and culture. Um, I'll give you a couple of towns in central France. Um, they are in Central France is known for its knife making, um, not something that's very well known, but you may have heard of Lyol knives or Nonton knives. These are world famous. But can you bring them back? But, Obviously, you couldn't bring them in a carry on. Uh, how do people. You would tr- have to ship them probably by FedEx or UPS. Oh. I would not put one in your carry on luggage. <laughs> yeah, you won't get on the plane. <laughs> Exactly. Another great one is Limoges. If you know um, anything about porcelain, you will be in heaven if you travel to the the geographic center of France. Um, Limoges is a very off the beaten path, very authentic French town, a pleasure to visit, and especially if you're a fan of ceramics. Mm. And I would think those too can be tough to get home. I mean, uh, how do you how do you ship those? Isn't that a little dangerous or no? Well, the good news in Limoges is that the uh, the artisans are accustomed to shipping, and some of them even have special containers that are made specially for shipping fragile items. You should always stick with FedEx or UPS. Um, I don't recommend using the local postal service only because it's very difficult to track it once mm-hmm. you're back in the United States. Right. Some, um, some companies will actually ship it for you, and that's a great solution. Just make sure that you get the email of the shop and also the tracking number before you leave. Well, um, one of my favorite shopping spots in Italy, actually, back to Italy, is a little town called Deruta in Umbria, uh, where they have these marvelous hand-painted bowls and plates. I'm assuming Deruta is probably in your book. Oh, yes. Well, Deruta is one of the, uh, the, the great triumvirate towns of, of, of uh, ceramics. The other two, which are nearby, are Gualdo Tadino and Gubbio. All three towns were very well known during the Renaissance for creating beautiful ceramics, and they are truly a pleasure to visit today because you can see so many people working Um, in contemporary styles, but also bringing inspiration from the past into their work. Well, speaking of a pleasure, it's been a pleasure to have you on the Travel Show. We thank you so much for appearing here today, and we look forward to talking to you another time. Thanks, Laura. Thank you so much, Pauline. 